Hi, I'm Paula Storm and welcome to this week's Sweet 16 Sunday. Today I wanted to show you how I bind my quilts using the Sweet 16. Um, it's entirely possible to do um, pretty much a whole quilt from start to finish using the Sweet 16. So that's what I wanted to show you today. I've cut my binding strips. Now I like to work with a two and a half inch binding strip. So that's what I've got here. And so what I'm going to do now is join them um, with a mitered join. Now to be honest, I usually work with, um, I just join them straight of grain, but a lot of you would like to know, I guess, how to join um, the right way. So I'm going to do that. I'll show you how do I do that today. Now, first of all, I can never remember which way to cut my angle. So I'm going to show you my trick that I always use. First of all, I'm going to line up my pieces at um, a right angle to each other. And then I'm just going to pretend that it's joined by machine. So I'm going to line it up perfectly across the top and across the bottom. And then I know that the join that I need to make needs to be that exact angle. So what I do now is I just finger press that seam carefully so I don't stretch out the bias. And then I fold it back down and I've got that crease to follow. I'll move that along to the end of my fabric so I'm not wasting fabric. And now I'll take this to my machine and you could do this on the Sweet 16 but the Sweet 16 is really designed to sew through more than two layers of fabric. So um, it can be a bit tricky to join that, that seam on the Sweet 16. So I would just take that to my Husfana and I've got a Husfana Sapphire. So I'll take that to my machine and I'll join all of my strips of binding on um, that, that seam. Then I'll come back, I'll trim off the excess fabric, press that seam open and I'm ready um, to, or almost ready, to sew my binding down. Okay, so I'm at the ironing board now. I've got my two and a half inch strips all joined together into one big length. And what I need to do now is fold it in half. I like a double fold binding, so that's what I'm making here. So I put them right sides, to, uh, sorry, wrong sides together and I just line up the fabric like that and press it together. And we just need to continue on all the way down um, the length of the binding. So what I like to do is just tuck the fabric underneath the cord of my iron so that um, I keep it nice and straight and I just push it off the end of the ironing board. So what I've got is the bulk of the um, binding is up this end of the ironing board and hanging over the edge. And the pieces that I've already pressed will hang over the right side of my ironing board. So I just continue ironing all the way along until the whole piece is just one long fold like that. Okay, so I'm finished pressing my binding. And now keep in mind that the bulk of the binding is at the right hand side um, and I'm working on the very start of the binding. So if I was to start stitching this to my quilt now, this is the, where I'm gonna start. So that's the end I wanna work with. And what I wanna do is fold it on a right angle like that. So I'm folding it away from myself and give that a press. And then what I want to do is fold it in half again and press it again. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me a nice little pocket to tuck the end of the binding in. When I come to finish off the quilt, I can just tuck that binding in under there and I end up with a really nice mitered finish. So we'll head over, uh, the other last thing I wanted to show you before we head to the machine, what I like now to do now is roll up the binding so it's, um, it's nice and neat for me when I'm actually stitching. So what I'll do is go to the other end of my binding I don't bother cutting off that um, selvage because I know that's going to be um, cut off anyway, so I don't worry about that. What I like to do is roll the binding around my hand and it will get all twisted up like this, but that's okay. You can just untangle it as you go. And I wind up all of the binding onto my hand so it's nice and neat. Okay, so I'm over at the machine. I've got my quilt here ready to go. I've got my binding all wound up. As I said, I just wind it onto my hand and continue winding until it's all wound up like that. And the beauty of doing it that way is that I can then have it laying next to me and I can just unwind a little bit at a time as I'm going. 
and it doesn't get all puddled up on the floor or um, into a mess or anything. So that's how I like to do that. When you start sewing your binding on, you want to leave yourself a good little tail um, before you actually start stitching because what you want to be able to do is when you come back to the start or to the end, you want to be able to tuck your piece underneath. So you want to give yourself a good six inches or so uh, before you start stitching. Now another thing you'll notice is a lot of people actually square up their quilts um, before they attach the binding. Um, the reason I don't do that is because I like to have a really tight full binding and so I like to trim up after I've attached the binding and I'll show you that later but I do leave the excess on my quilt and what I do is line up the binding on um, the very edge of the, the, the quilt top. When it comes to corners, I, what I would do, if you've watched my basting video, you would have seen that I like to use a, a big square ruler and make sure that my quilt is square um, when I'm basting it. And then what I do is I also run around the outside of the whole quilt and I do a line of stitching. And it can just be a big basting stitch, but I like to stitch that down and make sure it's square. So that's why I don't need to trim up my quilt to make it square because I've already made sure it was square before I'm attaching the binding. So that's just my little trick there. The other thing is you want to make sure you're working or you start stitching your binding. on the. I usually do it on the bottom edge of my quilt. I make sure I've got the, um, the binding starting about halfway, about in the middle of my quilt. Um, maybe a little bit to one side just so that I don't end up with a join of my um, binding strip on the very corner. But you don't want to start on a corner. You don't want to start stitching your binding here because it's too hard to join at the end. Um, and you don't want it somewhere noticeable. So that's why I always start in the middle on um, the bottom of my quilt. Now what I do, because as I've mentioned dozens of times before, the position of the needle is about a quarter of an inch to the outside of that foot. So I'm going to use that foot lined up on the outside to um, make sure I've got my quarter inch seam. As you can see I've left my tail there and then I'm just going to put my foot back, my needle back down just to hold everything in place while I get set up. Okay, so the other thing I like to use for sewing on a binding um, is the versatile ruler. I've got a few ideas on how to improve on this ruler, but to get started, this is the ruler that I've found works best for me. And what I like about it is it's got these little notches at both ends of the ruler that'll start and stop the actual foot. But also, you know, it's a quarter inch, exactly a quarter inch from the outside to the inside of that um, that pedal. So you know as long as you line up the edges of the ruler with your edge of your fabric you know that you're going to sew a perfect quarter inch seam. So that's how I usually do a binding. Line up my ruler, sew that section and stop. I line up my next section, make sure it's lined up here, make sure it's tucked neatly against the foot and keep going. You want to make sure you're sewing nice little stitches. Um, you don't want big chunky stitches because otherwise it um, it won't be as secure. So do keep those stitches nice and small. Again I'm just lining up my strip with the edge of the quilt. And I'm getting to my first corner. Now what I like to do is I like to line up that little groove there with the edge of the quilt um, because I know that my needle is then going to stop a quarter of an inch before the end of my quilt. So I line up that line there with the, uh, this edge and I continue sewing. So that takes me to a perfect quarter inch before the end of my quilt. Then what I like to do is spin the whole quilt around and I actually stitch back off the edge of the quilt. You can use your ruler if you like to get a straight line. And I'm doing that because I want to get my needle out of the way. So then what I want to do to get that perfect mitered corner, I fold my binding strip back up 
and down again. And what I'm aiming for is to have the fold of the binding strip aligned perfectly with that top edge that we've just sewn and to have it lined up perfectly along this edge. So you'll end up with a little flap here. I'm going to grab my ruler to hold it in place and this is probably the trickiest part because you need to get over that bump but I'm actually going to stitch I'm going to use my finger to tuck it under the foot and I'm going to stitch right from the edge right across the top of that binding strip. So I want to have a row of stitching right across. A lot of people stop a quarter inch before the end. They lift up their foot, they do that fold and then they start stitching at that quarter inch mark. I actually find I get a much better mitre if I do have that line of stitching there. And then we just continue on. Unroll to give yourself a bit of slack. Line up at the side and continue stitching. Oh, the other thing I forgot to mention, with the Versatool, there's actually some guidelines on this ruler. Um, it's probably a bit hard to see here, but there's some lines here. And if you cut your strips at two and a half inches, your binding strip should line up exactly on that outside line. So as well as checking here and making sure that those grooves are lining up with the edge of your fabric, you should be able to check that line and make sure that your binding is filling up to that line. And then you'll know that you've got a, an even binding. Okay, so I've stitched all the way around the quilt and I'm back to the start. I actually stitched a bit too far, so I've just pulled out a few of those stitches to go back. What I want to do is make sure that that start where I started um, can lay nice and flat. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is open that up and tuck this piece underneath. So what I need to do is trim this piece off so it's only going to tuck in um, just past that fold there. So about an inch um, further than that and I just snip that straight across. Okay so now I've got my pieces lined up. What I want to do, make sure that this is nice and flat, open that up and tuck that in. Like that. And I want to make sure that they're lined up with my um, the edge of my quilt nice and tight because I don't want this to become baggy. So I want that nice and, and secure. So I want to make sure it's going to lay nice and flat, a little bit tighter rather than a little bit looser because as you're pulling it, it will tend to, um, to straighten out. So I've got that all lined up. So I'll go back to the machine. Once again, bring up my bobbin. And you can see I'm just holding that so it's nice and secure. Get my needle back down and then I'll grab my ruler again. And the ruler is going to act like a, a third hand for me. So it's going to hold that fold in place beautifully. Now I usually go back and forwards a couple of times because I know that's where the, um, the start of the binding is. So I'm going to sew over that a few times just to make sure it's nice and tight. And I'll see how that's just popping up, I'm actually going to make sure, just like I did with the corners, that it's nice and flat and stitch over it a couple of times. And then, that's it. I'm just going to continue until I get back to the start, which is right here. And I'm done. So now what I'll do is take, bring my binding, uh, my bottom thread up. snip off those threads and then I head back to the cutting board. We're up to the second last step which is trimming back um, the excess, getting rid of the excess. Now normally um, you would cut right on the outside of your quilt so you would have a quarter of inch of your binding showing on the front and the rest would be tucked behind and that's kind of the look that you would end up with. You'd have a quarter inch binding for me, I actually prefer to have a bit bigger binding showing on the front. I like about three eighths of an inch showing on the front. I, um, that's just personal preference. And I find when I do use that, um, the three eighths of an inch, I end up with the back, the back of the binding lining up perfectly with my stitching line. So everything looks perfect. So what I like to do is I grab my ruler and a ruler that's got 3 8 inch lines is the best to use here. 
and what I do is I line up one line with my stitching line down here so that I know the quilt's going to be square and then I line up my actual stitching line with the 3 8 of an inch line on the ruler and I trim my quilt back to there just get rid of that at the start and I'm actually moving my ruler in case it's um I haven't sewn it quite straight I'm making sure that the whole thing is 3 8 of an inch from the stitching line and this is going to give you a perfect binding every time I guarantee it so you can see I'll just cut that much and show you so you can see I've cut 3 8 of an inch from my stitching line to the outside of the quilt and then when I fold my binding over I'm going to have a beautiful binding on the front, a nice full binding and when I flip it over to the back, there's my stitching line when I fold it over it will actually just pass the stitching line so it will be perfectly neat and, um, and it will look exactly perfect your binding is really nice and full and the whole thing will just look beautiful so that's how I do my binding I'll um, as I said I'll trim it all back to the 3 8 of an inch and then I'll fold it over when it comes to corners I might just trim this corner up and show you the corner okay so I've got that 3 8 inch line with my stitching okay so when it comes to the corner because we've got that row of stitching just here, it's going to help you fold it over and get a perfect mitered corner. So what you want to do is just sort of push it back over um, the corner like that. And you can see that already you've got the perfect mitre on this side. When it comes to the back and when you're hand stitching, what I like to do, um, depending on which way you stitch from, I fold it over. Actually, I usually go from this side. I fold it over. I hold it down and I stitch, hand stitch right up to the edge. I stitch right to the edge of the quilt, right to here. And that way, when you fold it back down and over, that quilt will line up perfectly um, with that edge there and you will have a perfect mitre on your corners on both sides. And that is how I do my bindings. If you like, you can actually stitch it down by machine rather than doing the hand stitching. What I would do is run some glue along the edge here and glue that binding down. And then what I do is take it to the Sweet 16 and actually stitch in the ditch. And what that ditch stitching will do is grab just the very edge of your binding and so you'll have a row of stitching down that edge and so then you can finish your binding completely on the Sweet 16. Personally I prefer to do it by hand but with the glue as I said you would run it along there glue that side down and then I would run glue across the top here and right down the side and glue that edge over. If you like you could pin it um, instead of using the glue and then you would just have to remove the pins as you were going but that's how I would do um, a binding completely on the Sweet 16. I hope you've enjoyed this week's video if there's anything you would like to see please don't hesitate um, to send me an email um, or leave a, a message on this video and um, and I'll do my best to do a video for you so thanks for watching see you next week